in around two years from now, General Motors will have four different battery chemistries. Four. I mean, it's getting complex, but it's going to give you some really good options. The question is, what's the difference between them? And which one you should you buy versus another one? Well, I'm not going to tell you which one you should buy, but I'm going to try and explain the differences and give you an idea on what General Motors plans are. I've got to say GM's battery plans are actually looking really quite exciting in the United States. Lithium ion phosphate batteries are coming in a very big way to the United States. We have numerous car companies now manufacturing factories or about to that will produce LFP batteries, which will bring the cost of EVs down in the United States. It looks like General Motors could be the first potentially as their battery supplier, LG Energy Solutions and Samsung SDI. By the way, Samsung and SDI have solid state batteries in EVs right now testing. Both of those brand, both of those companies are bringing lithium ion phosphate batteries to the United States. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. All of General Motors EVs right now use nickel manganese cobalt aluminium batteries, NCMA batteries, which are quite unusual. They actually make up less than 5% of batteries used worldwide. So NCMA batteries. And they're more expensive, significantly more expensive than lithium ion phosphate. Electric vehicle battery production in the US has really centered around NMC chemistry. So nickel, manganese, cobalt batteries. Now they obviously used lithium. So when someone says NMC, it doesn't mean it's not a lithium battery, just for those of you who might be new. Automakers are now shifting gears. They're moving towards lithium ion phosphate batteries, which will re reduce costs. They are also have a longer battery life and they have some advantages in China that have been discovered recently. They can charge much faster than NMC batteries. So the fastest charging batteries in the world right now, all of them, all there's about five different ones. They're all lithium ion phosphate. Incredible, isn't it, really, that this has changed so quickly. Really, we know the number one fastest charging battery in the world that you can buy today, it only comes in two models of car from BYD, but that's a 1,000 kilowatt charge speed charging blade battery. The new version of the blade battery can charge at 1,000 kilowatt. So LFP do have some advantages they didn't used to have. This didn't used to be a feature of them, but that's changing. Now, there is a bit of um, kind of confusion because both of these companies, Samsung and LG Chem or LG Energy Solutions, both of them, they don't have any experience with LFP. They haven't done it before. I mean, China got the patents. Those patents now have expired. So now those companies are working on LFP, but we don't know what energy density they're going to be, how fast they can charge, how much they're going to cost. Well, they're going to be cheaper, but we don't know how much cheaper. So General Motors, anyway, they're pressing ahead with alternative chemistries to lower the cost of EVs. They're also working on a manganese-rich battery, which is not an LFP battery. It's not an LMFP battery. It's just a manganese-rich lithium-ion battery. So I believe it's an NMC battery with more manganese but that won't come for a few years. The Korea Economic Daily reported on Tuesday that GM's two main battery suppliers, LG Energy Solutions and Samsung SDI, are going to manufacture lithium ion phosphate batteries in the United States. And these could end up being the first lithium ion phosphate battery plants in the US. They might be ahead of both Ford and Tesla's CATL battery factories. So CATL are gonna license lithium ion phosphate battery technology to Ford and Tesla. And Ford plans on building that factory in Michigan. The plant was meant to start production in 2026. That might not happen. We don't know at this point. I think it should. This would really help Ford to be able to not lose $30,000 on every electric car they sell. But anyway, who knows yet? Samsung and General Motors $3.5 billion joint venture in Indiana is already building prismatic cells or planning on doing it. The factory is being built right now. That's going to happen in 2027. Now, though, Samsung SCI will retrofit part of the facility originally designed for NMC battery cells to manufacture lithium ion phosphate. And the company is sourcing raw materials and equipment to make this change. So it's already happening. It's already done. It's a done deal. 
LG Energy Solution General Motors' primary battery supply is looking to convert a section of its Ohio and Tennessee facilities into LFP manufacturing as well. So some competition here. That's according to a recent report. Currently, LG ES, LG Energy Solutions, makes NMC pouch and cylindrical cells and has eight battery factories in the United States and quite a few in South Korea. Some of those factories are already up and running. Others are nearing completion soon. They've invested huge sums of money. General Motors previously said that the next generation Chevy Bolt EV and a future version of the Silverado EV, a cheaper version, will get lithium-ion phosphate. What that means is there'll be a base model of the Chevy Bolt EV, which will be cheaper. Probably, I'm going to guess, potentially under $30,000 US dollars. The Silverado EV base model as well might be closer to $50,000 US dollars, meaning you're going to see pretty much price parity with those vehicles and internal combustion. Other models, GM hasn't said which ones will get lithium-ion phosphate, but I'm going to guess they'll probably put lithium-ion phosphate into their base models for all versions of their cars. That is unless these batteries are capable of the kind of charging speeds we're seeing from these new batteries in China. And if they're capable of that, they might even put them in their higher end vehicles. Our EV strategy is focused on designing products that continue to lower cost, improve performance, and localize production, a GM spokesperson said. Battery technology is a key enabler of that strategy. We don't comment on rumors. So it's not a rumor. It's been confirmed in South Korea. There is a very likely chance that the Chevy Equinox EV will also get a lithium-ion phosphate battery. But anyway, either way, no matter what happens here, this is good news for American consumers because General Motors, by using two different battery companies, both of them making their own LFP battery lines, it's putting pressure on them, both companies, to lower their prices because they've got competition. And it's also going to put pressure on CATL. Ford are going to say, well, actually... Um, we got offered for S, you know, Samsung and LG Chem, they both offered us uh, this deal. Can you do a better price? This is the kind of thing that's going to happen. So the more companies that do this, the better it is. Goshen High Tech also, they plan to build a lithium ion phosphate battery factory in the US as well. Current GM trucks and SUVs use nickel manganese cobalt batteries, NCMA batteries. And apparently the energy density is actually pretty good. And that's one of the reasons why GM Silverado, for example, has more than 450 miles of range, the long range version, and is said to get that in the real world, which is really cool. But the thing is, those are pretty expensive. So this is going to be a big, a big technology change for General Motors. They're going to have three different types of batteries, or even four potentially, lithium ion phosphate. They'll have NMC batteries, They'll have NMC manganese rich batteries and they'll have NMC A batteries. So four different chemistries. There'll be a bit of confusion, guys. Make sure you tune into the channel. I'll continue to do videos to try and educate people on the differences between these batteries, the pros and cons, and why you should potentially choose one option versus another one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.